Welcome to the RCO's A to Z of the organ and the letter K for an introduction to keyboard skills. In the next few minutes I'm going to be looking at the elements which are typically involved in RCO practical examinations. That is transposition, sight reading, score reading, harmonisation and figured bass. There are several improvisation videos on IRCO so I won't be covering this element today. There are several pieces of advice which are relevant to all the skills I'm discussing and the first and most important is to keep going, even if what you hear surprises you or if you're momentarily shaken by a mistake. The most important things are rhythm and continuity. Usually we have a few seconds to look through something that we're going to sight read, so use the time strategically. Look at the key signature, are there any accidentals? What's an appropriate tempo? and relating metronome markings to 60 beats per minute is helpful. Subdivide the beat for precision in complex rhythmic shapes, don't just guess, and make sure you know where any manual or stop changes occur. Quickly practicing these above the keys is a good use of the time. And are there any other musical instructions, any slowing or acceleration, use of the swell box? And what about phrasing? As you begin, stay calm, keep breathing, commit to your chosen tempo and try and maintain your technical poise. Looking ahead often comes up when we're discussing sight reading and it is certainly a very important tool. But what does it mean? At its most developed, it means storing and processing what you're about to play. But it can also just be as simple as tracking the contour of the line ahead of you. Maintain your loose posture so that you can react quickly to any demands and don't restrict your concentration into a narrow laser. Instead, try and lightly focus on multiple artistic and technical areas as you play, adjusting your concentration as necessary. For example, most passages have some challenges and some easier parts and concentrating on everything equally is unhelpful. Try chunking harmonic information together you don't have to read every detail, and aim to stay in five finger positions where you can. Recognise any repetition of material, watch out for system or page changes, and don't let mistakes derail you. These are usually a lot less intrusive than you might think. Also, having a working knowledge of the genres that come up frequently in these examinations is a good use of your preparation. The publication of past papers allows you to both gauge the standard and the likely idiom. When you're practising, try and use a mixture of materials, some easier, others at the edge of your current capability, and try and perfect your past papers. Here we're being asked to provide support for a choir learning an unaccompanied piece in rehearsal. Again, the most important things are a consistent pulse and reliable rhythm. In your preparation, start with just two staves, moving to three and then four or five. Much of the repertoire is written in longer note values, and this does not mean that the music is played slowly. Try to be faithful to the metronome mark. Dividing the hands across the voices can cause anxiety. As a rule of thumb, try and use the right hand for the top two voices and the left hand for the bottom two. But there are exceptions, including resting voices, large intervals between two parts, and the crossing of parts. Importantly, don't cross the hands in this situation. Practice individual beats to help place the pitches in ascending order from the bass, and by that I mean the first beat of every bar, the second, the third, or the fourth. And try to read in a zigzag pattern from top to bottom. Reading across the score also gives shape to individual lines, including breaths at punctuation. Once again, look for any repetition of material and always try and think harmonically. Hearing the hymn in its original key in your head is a good start, including modulations. Then be very careful about the key you are transposing into. Errors about the direction of transposition are surprisingly common. It's tempting to think down or up a note, but you need to read the intervals, stepwise movement being the simplest. If you find it tricky to identify leaps, here's a useful shorthand. Thirds and fifths are space to space or line to line, and line to space or space to line is a fourth or a sixth. It's also possible to read the intervals between parts, 
For example, movement in thirds between the soprano and alto means you only have to concentrate on one of those two parts. Accidentals need care and they reveal useful information about modulations. As with the other skills, keeping going is your number one consideration, even if you end up dropping the left hand or the pedals momentarily. Imagine the impact of hesitation on the congregation trying to sing the hymn. You can pace your progress here by transposing just two parts to start with, perhaps soprano and alto with the right hand, or tenor and bass with the left hand and pedals. Then moving to three or four parts when you've built up your confidence. Once more, aim to perfect any past papers. This element is covered in the RCO's video Confident Harmony 2, but here are a few tips. Before attempting a full hymn tune, practice harmonising cadences and short phrases in a variety of simple keys. When approaching a complete melody, first of all carefully identify the key and the modulations, and then start with the cadences using stock progressions. Keep the rest of the harmony simple, with the predominance of primary chords and their inversions. Work at developing past papers here by gradually expanding your harmonic vocabulary as you gain confidence. You might like to watch the RCO's video Confident Harmony 1 before embarking on figured bass. Figured bass is the shorthand of numbers and symbols which guides the improvisation of a simple accompaniment above a given bass. The figures relate to the intervals of notes above the bass, allowing us to realise the composer's harmony. The inversions of triads are figured as follows. Root position, 5-3, first inversion, 6-3, and second inversion, 6-4. A further shorthand also exists. Root position chords are usually left unfigured. A 6 implies a first inversion. The second inversion chord, the 6-4, is always fully figured. To realise a figured bass, we must concentrate on the bass. Don't play the given melody. That is there just for reference and in an exam, it will be played on a separate manual by the examiner. To get started, position hands so as not to crowd the bass and just add two or three notes in the right hand, keeping the bass line in the left. And when moving from chord to chord, aim to keep notes the same or to move by step. This will give you a smooth contour and help to avoid parallels. Again, think about the things that need the most brain power here. Cadential formulae and common progressions will soon become ingrained in your fingers, but inevitably all of this takes practice. Daily practice is key. Building any skill takes time and we must put the time into our keyboard skills. This will of course develop your musicianship as well as your fluency at the keyboard. Lastly, try to use these valuable skills in your day-to-day -day musical activities, whether that's transposing a hymn on a Sunday morning or score reading for the choir in a rehearsal. And look out for the next video in the series, The Letter L.